Hi. Welcome back. Um, it's been stirring up in my mind and my heart to talk about um, who is the real God. Uh, the church proclaims it's a man, uh, and different religions proclaim even monkeys and whatever. But God Hashem uh, states very clearly in his Torah uh, who he is. It says very clearly, I am God and there is no other. He is infinite, not finite. He's everywhere at the same time. He's in everybody's life at the same time. He's um, not finite. He's infinite. So what did he what does he say in the Torah? Let's go look, huh? Uh, do not recognize other gods in my presence, he says. That's Deuteronomy chapter five, verses seven through nine. It says Isaiah forty five verses five through seven. There is no other God. The Holy One of Israel, Almighty God, the Father that He, he is called in and the Father is not from church, it's from Yermayahu or Jeremiah, um, chapter one and chapter three, Hashem says, Call him our father. So addressing Hashem as Father God is not wrong either. But saying that he's more than one, and okay, he has a lot of names, yes. But he's only one God, Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And forgive me for saying your name, but it's not in vain. I'm saying the Shema. Uh, and we, all Jews all over the world, especially Orthodox, say that before they go to sleep at night, the last thing before they close their eyes. And in the morning, when we open our eyes, we have to go wash our hands, and then we say that. And it is a commitment and a devotion to the one and only God. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say, oh yeah, we only have one God, but it's not the right one. If you, if you think J.C. is God, you don't have the right God, according to the Bible, according to the original scriptures. The Jewish people still have the original scriptures in Hebrew. But try arguing that with somebody who goes to church. Oy, oy, oy. We won't even go there. But, uh, and it's a shame because you, I remember way back when, when people were like hungry and thirsty to search for truth. They wanted to know only truth. But in these days, this is what I believe. This is what I know. Everybody else believes it also, where I go, my congregation. So it must be right, because a bunch of people do it. And now, all over the world, because we're at the end of the Roman exile, so you have uh, a lot of JC believers, yeah? But that's only until the end of Roman exile. It says very clearly in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, that when... Uh, when that time comes and Hashem is going to pull the rug out from under the feet of the people in church that their J.C. itis is not going to do them any good anymore, then they're going to, it says, and ten non-Jews will, will grab the sitzes or the fringes of a Jewish person and say, we want to go with you because we heard that you know God. Well, I got news for you. It took them a long time to figure that out, but better late than never. Uh, that's why the Torah says that the Jewish people are a light to the nations. They're not big shots. They're not privileged characters. They're not 
um, well, the Nicene Council and the early church fathers were actually jealous. And for the jealousy, they hated the Jewish people. But it says very clearly in Isaiah or Yeshayahu 42.6 that we are a light to the nations. Why are we a light? Because we know the truth. The people that are Jewish and have grown up in, in, in Judaism in a home where the parents uh, had the love of Torah and the love of Hashem and taught that to their children, you'll never see them accepting JC and all this stuff because they know better. I didn't know better. I grew up in a secular home. At the age of 29, I made teshuva actually um, not with, with complete ignorance. I just asked God forgiveness for, for whatever I did wrong. I didn't even know what I did wrong. I mean, I knew that I didn't hold Shabbos and whatever, but I didn't even know it was a commandment. I went to Hebrew school when I was a child, and I had to teach myself Hebrew because my Hebrew teacher, and that was conservative shul, taught me how to sing songs and paint pictures in Hebrew. <laughs> but to, to get back to it, um, and so I went through a very interesting path, and we won't go there now. I'm not giving testimony now. Only that it took a, a many years until finally uh, I started learning ultra-truth. Let me tell you that there is a rabbi on YouTube. His name is Rabbi Tovia Singer. He is an amazing rabbi, very well-grounded, very well-balanced. And he went through the whole New Testament, and there are various videos of his on YouTube that talk about all the different subjects because the church uh, pulls up all these prophecies of ours from Isaiah, from Jeremiah, this and this, and says that that's J.C., and they're taking things completely out of context, okay? And we won't even go there. But bottom line is that I recommend anybody and everybody who would want to follow the true God, who would want to know truth, who would want to do right before God, would find a knowledgeable Jewish person and begin to learn with them. Not that you have to become Jewish. There are what's called Noahide these days. You can find it online. The seven Noahide laws are for people that are non-Jews, but that they know the truth of who is God, that they know the truth of what God expects from them. And there's they say, do the seven and go to heaven. Why? Because the Noahides only have seven and I won't call them laws, let's call them commandments to go to heaven. And they come from uh, Noah in, um, in the Torah. So what am I telling you? Who is God? God is infinite. He created this world. He said, let there be light. And there was light. He created the Jewish people to be a light to the nations. But I've gone to many places, especially uh, pastors and churches, trying to offer truth. And they think that they have it. And they're not interested in, in, in changing or knowing anything more. Are they not forcing God's hand to prove that they don't know right? I hope it doesn't come to that. In any case... Um, I think I didn't even record this. Unbelievable.